hands that praise you for these reasons I worship you for these reasons I live to tell of your love to all the would go to the Lord and pray with me. Lord, if, if you would please, Lord, just come down on our hearts right now, Lord. Just fill this room, Lord. Fill this, this church of people with, with your love, Lord, and your grace, Lord, and just shed us, shed us away from our sins, Lord. Pull us away from those sins. And let us just gain community, Lord. Let us fellowship in your holiness, Lord. Just bask us in your glory. And I know we're few here today, Lord, and that there are many out there worried about the storm that's coming, the storm that's going to interrupt their lives, Lord. And just, just let them know that sometimes you interrupt our lives, Lord. And that we can just look forward to those interruptions, Lord, and not shy. Hey, thanks for joining us this morning for our contemporary worship service here at Starkville First United Methodist Church. We're excited about today, and we want you to be excited about today. We're going to have some good music and possibly even some good preaching. But we just want you to join us as we journey through this day, and I pray that you're inspired through what you are about to receive. Come, let's go. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you were. Jesus, you will always be. You'll be a servant to us. A perfect servant to us. A perfect servant to death. Even 
death on the cross. Give us a picture of your face. Show us the measure of your grace. Reveal the love of the Father. Put within us tenderness, release from us our selfishness, and we'll consider them better, because we are yours. Give us hearts, and we are yours. Give us hearts, and we are yours. Give us hearts of servants. You can be seated. This next song is um, called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And um, after talking with Jason and Laura Kate, we decided that since we were doing an acoustic set this weekend because of the, the holiday that we would um, do sort of a meditation song. And we're going to try to do this more often just so that uh, we feel like meditation in the service will just help us focus our minds before the, um, before the sermon. And so we're going to try to do this, and uh, we just hope that you enjoy it and that you can really um, find worship through this. So uh, if you would, if you'd like to sing, that's fine. Um, but uh, really just listen to the words and just um, uh, see how they mean to you and fit your life. Deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretched treasure. How great the pain of spirit. Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one and bring many sons to glory. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Oh, 
I should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. These monitors need to be turned way down. I'm the only. Am I coming through the main speakers? Anyway, I don't like to hear myself. That may be better. That's just still a little bit too much. But anyway, that'll work. Let's not dwell on that. Uh, so a good a good idea. A good idea, I get away from them, a good idea uh, might be to pray at this point. <laughs> Let's pray. God, as Raymond has already alluded to, we, we're nervous. We have a major storm that is bearing down on our Gulf Coast right now. And many of us have families there, many of us have friends there. Many of our students who are not with us today have traveled there. And God, many of them are making their way back, seeking shelter, seeking uh, a place for rest and for security. And God, we just ask that you just be with them. Watch over them. Comfort them as the days unfold. And God, we just ask that you spare lives. From heaven, we pray that you reach down and just touch this storm and move it away from us and move it out uh, to a place where it will do no harm. And God, just be with us as we weather all the storms of life. God, thank you for this place, this wonderful church that you've given us that we can gather each Sunday and just worship and glorify you as we've already done this morning. Thank you for the beautiful words that you've sent our way already this morning. And God, I pray that uh, as your spirit continues to move and to flow through this congregation, I pray that you would just help us to just uh, open our hearts to you, to allow you to come in and speak to us and transform us into the people that you have called us to be and the people that we have professed to be. God, thank you again for all that you do and have done. And may our acts of worship today, may they glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus. Exodus. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's in the Old Testament. And it follows Genesis. I hope everybody knows that. But if you don't know, that's where we are. Exodus chapter... I may just take the microphone off. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. There's still a bad ringing. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Well, let me begin by 
Let me begin in chapter 2, verse 23. Y'all keep it right there. But I think the, the 23rd verse of the chapter 2 is really important for this story. It says, After a long time the king of Egypt died, the Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery and their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice on them. So before I read chapter 3, understand where we are in the story. We are, the Israelites have been captured. They're slaves now. And this is, in essence, God saying, I have heard their cries. I have heard their needs. I have heard uh, their sorrow. I've heard that, and I'm going to remember them. And so chapter 3 picks up with the story of Moses and the burning bush. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites have, has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said farther, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. Church, this is the word of God for the people of God. Well, here Moses is. And I'm sure Moses knows about the plight of the people. Well, here he is out doing what he probably does just about every single day of his life. He's out tending his father-in-law's sheep. Now, there's probably no telling how many times Moses has made this trip to this place, out past the city gates, out into the wilderness. There's no telling how many times he has made this journey. No telling. He was doing what he does just about every day of his life. But then, an interruption. An interruption comes in the midst of his... I'm sorry. I forgot I had my phone on. I'm a little bit embarrassed. I'm sorry. And this is on TV. Mm. 
of this creative editing. Anyway, so Moses is out, and he's doing his thing. He's leading the sheep out, and he's trying to find them a new place. I'm sorry. Hello? Well, I'm a little bit busy <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of preaching. Uh, got a bunch of people looking back at me. Well, I, yeah, no, I can't talk right now. I'm a little bit busy. No, God. No, I, I don't have time. I am, I can't take disruptions in my life because I am simply busy doing what I always do. No, I didn't see the burning bush. I'm telling you, God, there's people looking at me right now. I can't talk. No. Okay, we'll talk later. Bye. Disruptions in the midst of our busy lives. Disruptions in the midst of an ordinary day. They come. And for Moses, the burning bush was for him on this day a disruption in his busy, busy life. But see, it is, as Raymond has already alluded to in, our, uh, in, our, in his singing this morning, these disruptions come because it's usually... God needing to say something to us. God needs to get our attention. And on this day, God, could, God had to do something to disrupt the busyness of Moses' life. And on this particular day, it was a burning bush. Because see, I, am, I, I firmly believe on this day, had it been like any other day, Moses may not have paid much attention to his surroundings. But God did something different. God contacted Moses in a way Moses least expected. Kind of like the cell phone ringing in the middle of a sermon. I'm just doing what I do every Sunday, God. I'm doing what I do. I'm feeding the sheep. I don't need any disruptions. I don't need any distractions. I'm doing what I do. But this event was more than Moses could bear. This burning bush was something that he had to, as the Scripture says, go and investigate. Moses, and I find this amazing, the author even quotes Moses as saying, I must turn aside and see this thing. If it's been us, I've got to go look at this. This is, just, this is blowing my mind. So Moses goes over. He's been distracted to a point he's curious. He's interested in seeing what's going on not just because the bush was burning, but because it was not being consumed. Moses goes over, and he looks at the bush, and I know what he's thinking. Well, I don't know what he's thinking. I know what I'd be thinking. Well, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. How in the world is this possible? Well, then right at the moment that God had Moses' attention, God spoke. He spoke. And he said, Moses... Moses. Now what would you say if God had said your name? Huh? <laughs> I don't know that I'd say, I'm here. I might, I, I might be questioning my sanity at this point. But this was an event that was so out of the ordinary, so extraordinary, that Moses had to have known this was something, this was supernatural. This is not something that would just be here happening without, you know, this is just, there's, it's unexplainable. And so he says, here I am. Here I am. Now, I don't know about you, but I have found in my own life, in the daily routine of our everyday life, I'm easily dis distracted by many things, I assure you but not many of them capture my attention. Not many of them cause me to stop and look and to hear and to listen. Not many of them do that. We're distracted by lots of things in life, but very few of them grab our attention. 
But you can bet that when God wants to get our attention, God will get our attention. God will send something in the midst of our busyness to grab us and capture us and hold us. Sometimes it's terrible things. I hate to say that, but sometimes it's terrible things. Sometimes God has tried everything in his power to get our attention, to cause us to stop and to look and to listen, and it just doesn't work. So sometimes God just has to do what God has to do to get our attention. And on this day, it was a burning bush that caused Moses to pause in the midst of his life. And every time God grabs our attention, you can bet that God has something very important to say to us. Very important. Something very critical most of the time. And on this day for Moses, God said, Moses, I have heard the suffering of my people. I know their sorrow. I know their misery. I know what they're experiencing. And Moses, I need you to go get them. I need you to go to Pharaoh, the one who is the, 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 the general, the captain, the master of all these people. I need you to go to him. I need you to go to confront him and say, God's had enough, let him go. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Do you know any people in your world who needs to hear that there's hope? Do you know any people in your world that's oppressed, that's given up, that's entrapped or enslaved to something, whether it be drugs and alcohol, pornography, uh, wealth, material possessions, church? That all, uh, all these things can become gods in our life and they can capture us and enslave us. You say, church? Yep. I know, I, know, I know lots of people who worship the church more than they do God. Do you know anybody like that? I do. And as Christians, God is ultimately calling us to do what he's asking Moses to do. He's asking us to go and confront these issues, these things that enslave us, and speak truth to them. Speak truth in love and say, God has had enough. God wants you freed. God wants you to live into His light. God wants you to know not just a little joy in life, but an abundance of joy. As Jesus, as he prayed for his disciples in the book of John, the Gospel of John, Jesus said, God, I want my disciples to know my joy and know it well. Know it in abundance. You see, Jesus even called people to help him do that. And so God needed someone. And I find that fascinating that God, who could have done this easily by himself, God could have orchestrated this, God could have, he, whatever, he, he could have got the people out. But he chose to use somebody to help. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that, that God is calling to give a word of hope in the midst of chaos. I wonder if there's anybody here that God is calling to set somebody free with a word about Jesus Christ and His redemption and His love for humanity. I'm sure God's calling us to do that because Jesus said that's what we all are called to do in the very last part of Matthew, the Great Commission. Y'all do remember that, don't you? Go and share the good news of Jesus Christ, baptizing, teaching, showing the way. I think the issue is we're a lot like Moses a lot of the time. We're so wrapped up in our everyday routines. We're so wrapped up 
in the mundane. We're so wrapped up in our own lives that we can't see the hurting around us. And sometimes God has to send an attention getter and say, hey, it's not all about you. It's about me. And it's about the hope that I gave you, and I need you to go and share that hope with others. What a great story. I love this story. Deborah and I talked earlier in the week, and we, we just we love this story. It's such a good story. Because Moses, whether we like it or not, is us. Is us. Is that right? Yes. Moses, he is. He's, he's us. Because what, did Mo, what was Moses' response when, when God said, Moses, I need you to get out there and share the good news of hope. And Moses said, well, I, I don't know that I need to be the one to do that. You know, I, I can't speak all that well. And, you know, really, I'm a little timid, a little shy. And I'm just a farmer. I'm a, I'm a goat herder or a sheep herder. You know, who Pharaoh's not going to listen to me. Who am I? I mean, I know none of you have ever said that to God. I know that, but sometimes some of us do that. I do that and have done that. God, I'm very uncomfortable in this situation right here. And then God says great, great words to Moses. You go, Moses, and you go in my name. You go and tell them that I've sent you. You don't have to worry about all these other things that you got going on in your life. You don't have to worry about what you don't have, what you do have, what you can do, what you can't do. You don't worry about all that. You just make yourself available to me, and I'll do the rest. You just go. And Moses says, well, <laughs> and this is so funny. I, I, I find this so funny. Because it's evident this is God speaking to Moses because Moses said, well, I couldn't even look at God. I couldn't even look. And God said, this is holy ground. Take your shoes off. And then we get all the way to the end of the story and then Moses, what did he say? Well, who are you? Who are you? When I go, who, who do I need to tell him sent me? God said, you tell him I am. Well, who's I am? Well, I am. <laughs> I'm everything that you need. I'm the power, I'm the ability, I'm the courage, I'm the strength, I'm the stamina, I'm the witness, I'm the word, I'm the bread of life, I am the gate, I am the way, to the, I am the truth, I am the light. I am. I, I'm everything that you need. I'm everything that you're not. And so just trust me. Just go. And do what I'm asking you to do. I wonder, do we need a burning bush in front of us this morning? Do we need a, a fire set so we can begin to say, ha, huh, maybe that's what God is asking us to do. Maybe we need a fire lit under us. Oh, to get us moving and motivated to share this great gift that we have been given in Jesus Christ. Maybe that's what we need. Oh, God will get it. God will get our attention. Don't worry. God will get our attention. And when God does, you better listen to what he's got to say because I, it will be important. It will be extremely important. Well, this story is, 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 is so full of good stuff. So full of good stuff. And not only do we learn that God's in the business of calling us to speak truth and love and speak freedom to captives, not only is God doing that, but that we, we learn so much about God in this story. So much about God. For example, God hears our cries. Isn't that wonderful? God hears our cries. God said, I've heard, I've heard your cries. I've heard your sorrow. I've heard your suffering. God cares about us. After all, he created us. Why wouldn't he? 
God loves us, and God, God knows when we're hurting. And God hears. And another great thing we learned is not only does God hear us, but God responds. God responds to our hurts. He responds to our cries in many, many different ways. I can't even begin to uh, just e expound on the ways God responds. I've learned in my own life, God, sometimes when I, when I cry out and I say, God, get me out of this, sometimes God says, okay. And there's an immediately re immediate release, immediate help. But I've also learned it's usually through someone. It's usually through someone. God sends someone to speak to my heart. Then sometimes God says, no. <laughs> no, you're not getting out of it this easy. You're going to have to suffer a little while. You're going to have to spend some time on this journey. You're going to have to spend some time growing your faith and learning what it is to trust me. Trust I am. You're going to have to do that. I'm not going to get you out of it that quick. Then sometimes God says, well, be patient. Be patient. Know that I'm at work, and you can see God working as you go. But th there's so many other ways God responds to our need. But 99% of the time, there's not a burning bush. There's a Moses. Someone that God has called upon to be the one to speak hope into hopelessness. I guess our challenge then is to look for those burning bushes in the midst of our busy lives and figure out who it is and where it is God is sending us. And yeah, we can, we can say, God, but nah, I don't think so. And we could give God every excuse in, under the sun to say why we can't do it. But I, was, I just, I just got to let you know, God's not going to let you off that easy. <laughs> Ask Jonah. Ask Jonah. God doesn't give up quite that easy. God will pursue you until you're ready to listen to what is being said. And then God will say, go. Go. Go and do this. And go in my name. Go and know that I'm with you. But, there, but you've got to be very... There's, you, I just want to share a word of caution with you. As you're hearing God speaking to you, and as you're hearing God going you cannot go alone because when we go alone we're speaking on our behalf and not on god's behalf and we can cause the situation to be worse so be careful and also this is not our call to go out and point out everybody's faults Oh, I know what you're doing, and I tell you, God has led me to tell you, you got to quit that. Well, there's a good way to get yourself in lots of trouble doing that. But see, God will, knew, God will tell you when the time is right. And on that day, how many days had Moses been to that same mountain? How many days had Moses taken that flock to the same patch of grass? How many days had, had Moses done this? We don't know, but we got to assume that He'd done, he had done this a lot in his life. But then it was that one day. That one day, God spoke. And the timing was right. The timing is now, Moses. And don't you know, don't you know, that Moses went with fear and trembling to talk to old Pharaoh. Of course, you know the story. and You know how it turned out. But the main thing I want you to hear me say to you this morning is God is calling us Christians to live a life that speaks hope and light into darkness. And God is calling each and every one of us here this morning to be His spokesperson when He speaks to us. 
not just because we feel like we need to set something straight or someone straight. The question is, are we so in tune with God that when those distractions come, we can stop and listen to hear what God has to say. I don't know about you, but my life is pretty busy. And I can think of every reason in the world not to slow down, not to pay attention, not to listen. And then it's usually in those times when God sends an attention getter. And for me, it's usually a knock over the head with something. Because I'm just like that. That's kind of how I'm built. What's it take to get you to slow down and to listen? God is speaking, there's no doubt. And God is hearing the groans and cries of His people. Are you listening to what He has to say? And are you willing to go and do as Moses did and speak truth and speak light and comfort and hope into darkness? God's still in the business. I promise you. I promise you. Let's pray. God, thank you for people like Moses and people like Peter and James and John and Paul and Barnabas, Ruth, Naomi. Thank you for these great saints that you have called out to do your work. And thank you for their willingness to be obedient and to love and to listen and to speak hope into our hopeless situations. God, throughout the Bible, you've taught us that you're all, that most always you ask someone to speak for you. And God, there's no doubt you're asking us to do that right now, but God, we may not be listening. We may not be hearing what you have to say because we're too busy. And God, if you have to send another burning bush, send it. Send it. Get our attention. Help us to stop in our tracks and to hear what you have to say. Because God, it may just be what we need to hear for our own lives. God, help us to always be looking for the ways you're speaking. And God, you may be speaking right now. You may have spoken through a song. You may have spoken through Scripture. You may have spoken through Word to someone here this morning that needed to hear what you had to say. And God, I pray that as we enter into a time of prayer that you would just move them to a deeper relationship with you so they may be who you're asking them to be in the days to come, your spokesperson. God, if we are here today and we just have, we're just gripped with fear, fear of the unknown, fear of speaking for you, fear of uh, who we have to confront or or the powers that be. God, help us to hear the same words you said to Moses. I am who I am. I am with you. I will guide you. I will direct you. I will comfort you. I will give you what you need at the moment I need you to speak. God, help us to trust you. Help us to have faith in you. and Help us to believe that when the time's right, you will give us what we need. God, as we pray, I pray that we're just open to your move and of your Holy Spirit in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. The altar is open. I just invite you to take this time to come and spend on your knees before God.
This is a song that I made um, over the summer. It's uh, based off of the book of Hosea, so it's a little, it's a little blunt at parts. Um, and if you don't know, I'll give you a brief summary of Hosea. Uh, God came down to Hosea and told Hosea, you're going to marry a prostitute, you're going to marry a whore. through that situation, God created the book of Hosea and the story of Hosea and said, take this reference of Hosea who's taken this bride, who's not faithful to him, and put that into your life and just see if that mirror is a reflection of you. And he speaks to the whole church when he says this, the church, the body of Christ, to all of us. He says, are we being whores to other things? Are we being prostitutes to other things of this world other than Him? Are we going around and having materialistic views? Are we going around and cursing, cursing people, cursing our Lord, not being kind and showing love to others in our own world? So this is about an unmistakable love of Christ that sometimes see the way we should. And it was, uh, I decided to play it because it was an interruption in my life over the summer. So I hope that uh, it can be an interruption in your life as well. How could I believe that in a tiny space so many things could have taken its place I see it has walls to be broken down, but what I found are roads to open doors. Why are we such whores? We go day to day saying we do, but we question who could have really done such things. Knowing that he has wings of the finest tune and me That could take us there, but do we even care? Oh, well, we say we do Oh, love sounds so easy But then why does it make us feel so queasy? It's always so hard to do Love is the hard way to do most things And that's why we choose those other feelings They're all too easy Love isn't easy Love isn't easy Those wings are made of love, branded by two holes and some blood. That's okay, it was his choice anyways. So honor it with the actions that you make and don't let those other feelings take you away from his way. sounds so easy but that's why it makes us feel so queasy it's always so hard to do oh love is a hard way to do most things and that's why we choose those other feelings they're all too easy love is an If you would stand and join us as we sing our closing chorus, we're going to sing a hymn, How Great Thou Art. Um, we're going to sing the first and last verse, um, so if you would just stand and join us. And this will be very light, I just, I just want to hear us all in a cappella almost, so if you would just join with us. stars, I hear the rolling 
Sing it to him. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great time then sings my soul my savior God to me how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior God to me how great thou art, how great thou art. Come on, everybody, hang with that. I love our band, and I love it when we're loud and raucous, but then sometimes I like it when we are tonight, like that we had today. So thank you, too, for sticking around with us. Uh, over this Labor Day weekend. Thank you for being here and spending time with us. Don't forget, be in prayer for those on the Gulf Coast, those uh, that are still recovering from Katrina. There are lots of lives that uh, are in jeopardy and in danger and homes and businesses. And, uh, and this, place, this, this, this place where you are right now will be turned into a, uh, a, a Red Cross Center for people to come and to have meals and stuff. So... If you're out and about and you might want, and, and the storm gets bad, come here and, uh, and just hang out and meet folks uh, that are here uh, that we're ho hosting. Also, our um, Skip Jack, our uh, bass guitarist, he is in the hospital uh, right now. He's uh, suffering uh, from some type of food poison or something. He was gone this weekend doing a, over in Parksman Penitentiary doing a Kairos and an Emmaus walk type thing and got sick so he's in the hospital there so be be in prayer for he and his family also it's not as near as fun to say it today and it might be by next week but we're having a big tailgate party <laughs> out at the university saturday morning saturday afternoon starting at one o'clock and the church will have a big tent and all the hot dogs hamburgers and drinks will be provided we just want you to show up and be a part of that. Also, Wesley Foundation is breaking, uh, having a groundbreaking celebration at 11 a.m. at their new building. So maybe all that will sound fun as we kind of get beyond yesterday. And hopefully it'll be more fun. But I hope that you have a great week, and I'm sorry that uh, we've kept you a little later than normal. But go in peace and know that God loves you and look for those burning bushes along the way. Love you. <laughs>